Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC, and here we're going to talk about the, uh, our actual tube bundle for the Long Mill NK2 machine. That's what I've got behind me now. It's a 2x4 machine. Uh, my particular version of it is uh, basically 4 foot wide, 2 foot deep. I've got, the, I've got my extraction hose running up here in the back, just kind of suspended from a uh, retractable uh, cord so that I can easily carve anywhere on the surface. The tube itself goes down the back through an elbow and then into our V3 dust boot with a removable face with our bracketing system attached to the uh, stock carriage. Now I do have the hour 80 millimeter mount on here which also makes it possible so if you've got the original 65 millimeter mount you may have some issues running our uh, bracketing but just know that ahead of time and yeah let's uh Let's dig into how we install this. Mm. So what I've got here spread out is our entire tube bundle. I've already assembled our uh, V3 dust boot. I've taken our extension adapter, which is basically the 90 degree, um, I've taken the, uh, the 90 degree portion the small one inch extension, extension and the, um, the squared off uh, adapter for the back of our boot. This is all that's needed for this particular setup. There may be a two inch as well as a 45 um, attachment in your baggie for the extension adapter. Those will not be needed for this assembly. So you just need those three pieces. And those, uh, oh, by the way, those screw together pretty easily. So you just screw them together and they don't need to go all the way, although you can use some painter's tape or something if you wanted to get those threads a little tighter. But we're basic, it's, it will have some flex to it. That's perfectly fine. Next, we're going to take some, uh, our tube. Yes, you will need to glue this. We've got a, a, a mag ring up here at the top. You're going to want to put some glue on the inside of that mag ring. Glue it to the top of the acrylic tube. On the other side, put some glue on the inside here and put this on there. What I like to do is make sure that this flat edge here is in orientation with these two, with, with two of the magnets. So glue those together, set it, set it aside gently so that it can dry. The next thing we've got is our uh, ultimate hose clamp. This is basically a very modular component. And that's actually what I've got here, these various components. This is called our drop arm. This is called just a regular arm, and of course this is our uh, stepper base, along with the tube attachment. This is the attachment that hits on the end of the, uh, of the ultimate hose clamp and actually does the actual work that we're wanting. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take our stepper base and our uh, coupler. We're going to put that coupler right into position like that so that it sticks out. This is actually where we're going to mount this right onto our NEMA 23 stepper. We're going to take our, our arm here and there'll be notches on it so that it perfectly lines up with the base. There'll be a couple of square nuts that you can drop down into these square holes here along with two socket head M5 by 20 screws. So you put that into place and that will basically hold the bait, the stepper base onto the arm. And the arm does not need to be very long in our, in, in, on this machine. Um, it just needs to be, so I need to push that. It just needs to be long enough to get past the rear assembly. So basically it's going to be mounting right here. It's going to be, need to get past the assembly back here where the cable chain mounts. It needs to get past that so that it can drop. So now that we've got this set up, the next step is we're going to take our drop arm. You need to take two of those screws and, put, and basically connect those two pieces. We've got the piece here with the magnets and the heat inserts. And then we've got the uh, plastic piece up on top, which acts as a receiver for our arm. So you'll notice it goes from the stepper, through the arm, through the joint, and then down. Um, we're going to take two uh, M5 by 14 screws. And you can just hand tighten those. There's a third one in the bag, and you can use that right there. Just make sure you put a square nut on the bottom. Um, 
there's a square hole under there, but I rarely use it since I'm always taking it apart and putting it back together. Again, highly modular. But once we've got the connection here and it goes down, then we're gonna take our, our actual attachment, stick that right onto the magnets, take additional two M5 by 14 screws and tighten that up. And again, you can use three if you wanted, just put that square nut in the bottom and that will uh, help hold that into place. Now, we've got this component all assembled. We'll, you, we'll put that onto the machine here in a minute. I wanna talk about our other components. So the rest of the components are all related to actually mounting it onto the machine and holding the dust boot in position. What this does, we've got a couple of plastic parts that mount onto the machine. We're gonna be using several, uh, a couple long um, M5 button screws from the rear to screw right into the plastic and hold these pieces in place. These pieces provide us a couple of holes that we can mount our aluminum track brackets to so that they mold perfectly to the machine. Now these screws are gonna be, or these brackets are gonna be held on by some additional M5 screws. After we get that done, we're gonna take our support arms. Now the support arms come in two pieces. There's a, the, the actual arm portion and then there's the track portion. In our case, we're gonna have the tracks um, where the, so, let me see. So we're gonna get, have a, an aluminum track, we're gonna have our bracket here and then slide that right onto the, onto the track. And when this sits up against the machine, it's gonna come down and then go to the rear. So the, bra the track needs to come down into the rear. You may need to file along this side and this side of, this, uh, of the indentation that sits inside of the aluminum track. Uh, this is perfectly normal. Over time, this will loosen up and get a little easier to move. We don't want that too loose, which is why we don't file it um, in the factory. As you're using it, that part will wear down and it'll get very slippery inside of the track and we don't want it too slippery. Let's go ahead and mount our ultimate hose clamp and then we'll jump over to adding the plastics. All right, what I have here is our spindle cable coming up and over. I've got the uh, stepper cape wire here and what I'm gonna do is move everything out of the way, utilize an M4 hex wrench and I'm going to remove these two long screws. I'm gonna be careful not to move or reposition anything and just remove those screws. I'm taking our um, our assembled ultimate hose clamp and moving the wires out of the way, I'm gonna set that right into the two, uh, align that right perfectly where I can drop the two long screws directly into place. And if those aluminum uh, risers didn't move, it should easily drop in and you should easy, uh, simply tighten the whole thing down. Now we made these couplers out of aluminum so that we could tighten them down as, as tight as we would like in order to retain the structural integrity of our, of our Z motor here. We don't want that shifting position or causing strain on our, on our uh, screw coupler down here. Since we're currently in this position, I'm going to go ahead and utilize the, uh, these, these snap-in L brackets, the, these plastic pieces that hold our tracks. So the, there's a little notch right here on the inside which attach, attaches to the linear track right at the top of it. The, uh, there's a little uh, notch uh, peg that sticks out and that's actually what this uh, indentation right here is for so that this track can sit perfectly in position without interfering with the, with the proximity switches or the screws because there's holes, uh, a, a, a hole, an indentation right here for this, uh, this socket head screw up at the top. So just kind of snap it into place. You may need to use a little hammer or a, uh, a rubber mallet, I should say. There it goes. It will snap right onto that linear track and it should stay pretty well, but we want to give a little extra effort here. I'm going to take a an M3 driver. Now we're gonna go real slow with this. We don't, we're screwing into the plastic with this long screw. It's basically gonna screw in from the backside. There's a couple of holes up towards the top and we're gonna screw this into the plastic, but be very careful, don't over screw it. There we go. Now this 
pieces right in place and I'm going to repeat that same thing on the other side. That plastic piece that I got here with the notches and everything. I'm going to set that right into position, kind of notch it right underneath there, kind of twist it right into position and then snap it into place. Now that that's staying there, I'm going to take that long screw, run it through that hole in the top and we're going to take our driver and very carefully screw that into position. Oops. Since I'm over here on this side, I'm going to take this bracket here. Uh, both the brackets are identical, however, they're going to be mounted in different orientations. So in this case, on the right side, we're going to have our screws running down the right side of the of the bracketing. That will allow us, that gives you the option to have additional things mounted onto this bracket so long as it doesn't interfere with the uh, support arms function. There are two more longer, um, uh, long screws here, and we're going to put basically put them right into position. I'm going to use that same driver, and again, this is going into plastic, so you want to go real slow. Do not over tighten these. Now, before I tighten that down, I'm going to go ahead and get the other screw in place. Here it goes. The next step is we're going to take our support arm. There is an M5 screw that goes in this way and an M5 locking nut on the back side. Now you'll notice that the bracket, the mounting part is up here at the top, comes down, and the track goes towards the back. And what I like to do is put that on a flat surface, then tighten down this screw so that the arm and the track are perpendicular. Now once I've got that attached and ready to go, I'm going to take one of our M4 track nuts slide that right onto the back and kind of hold it. This is the kind of the tricky part. I'm going to hold it there in the back, grab my thumb screw, put it through the top of the support arm here and tighten it down onto that nut. When you loosen this up, you're going to slide this up and down. Now that arm does not slide quite as nicely as you would like. Use files on this plastic part to kind of adjust, kind of squeeze that in a little bit so that it fits and slides perfectly in there. You can use a screw here. I believe this is an M3. Yeah, this is an M3. So if you need, if you can't use a, the thumb screw part, just use a tool, just tighten that down and that won't go anywhere. Adjusting the dust boot, I'll mount, I'll loosen both thumb screws and adjust both at the same time to try to keep that dust boot level or at least both tracks in line with each other. Now I've got my uh, bracketing mounted. I've got my support arms on there. I've got my ultimate hose clamp mounted in the back. My tube is now glued up um, and ready to be used. So I'm going to take that, just snap that right into position and we'll slide down. The idea of this attachment is the, ho the tube itself can slide up and down as you're adjusting the boot which we can go ahead and put that into place. So I'm going to grab my boot. I'm going to take my extension adapter, just kind of slide that into position, snap that in. It may be hard at first. Eventually it will loosen up to, it does not affect the seal. There, there doesn't need to be a seal right there for the suction. If you wanted to, you could put some painter's tape or something right there um, just to thicken that up so that this doesn't move, but it's okay to have that running like that. I'm going to take it from the front and I'm going to slide the boot right into position. Now because our tube's in the way, raise that up, slide the boot directly into position and we're going to slide the and snap it right into the top. There you go. Now you can see exactly how the tube attachment attaches at the top, comes down, attaches to the 90 degree angle at the front or on, on the boot and then of course right into the front into the boot onto the bracketing. And there may be a slight angle, but don't worry about that. That doesn't affect operation. And again, once you loosen up the thumb screws, you can raise and lower the dust boot depending on the thickness of your stock to find that pos for perfect position for you. And then your hose come down. What I've got here is I've got the, uh, the Maglock converter 
and I've got the uh, Fine, F-E-I-N, the Turbo One uh, extractor, and I've got its hose coming down here. We've got our boot adapter there with the maglock converter, which allows me to just plug it right in. If you did not buy that, um, it will come with a uh, the, the standard maglock round adapter, just a two and a half inch. You would band clamp one of your hoses or one of the flex hoses off from Amazon. You can easily do that. But the idea of the tube is it puts the hose attachment right up here at the top. You can reach over from the front of your machine, grab the boot, do a little cleanup if, if you got really enthusiastic with your carve and overwhelm the boot. And then once you're done, just put that back and you're back to carving uh, with full dust collection. Hopefully you found that informative and helpful in understanding how I design these brackets and how I've got them mounted onto my machine and how I'm using it. It's a, we found that the V3 is extremely nice design. It gets out of your way. I can mount cameras um, on the front of this, of this spindle mount so that I can you know, mount my GoPro and I can just point it right down and get great visibility into the carving of uh, whatever I happen to be carving. I will get some more videos and that sort of thing up showing that um, accessory as well as other accessories that we've got published. If you have uh, any questions or comments, leave them down below, or you can reach out to support at pwncnc.com. We're happy to help. And remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.